Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, take these words and make them your words. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us so that we can not only hear your words, but follow your will in all that we do. For I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. My update for the week is Joshua is doing well. They are working through the paperwork in Florida and will give us an update when they know more. But thank you. They, she did thank us for all our prayers. And <clears throat> I left it at that because I'm sure she's got plenty on her mind. Today in the message I want to share with you, in reference to the Gospel of John, I really have two points. It's about history and about hearing. <clears throat> First, history. It was very important what John pointed out when he said at the time of the festival of the dedication that took place in Jerusalem and the fact that it was winter. There's some significance to the portico, but we're not going to touch on that. You see, about 200 years prior to the moment John's referring to, an important thing took place. It was roughly around 167 BC to about 164 BC. There was a king, a Seleucid king, Antiochus IV Epiphanes. Basically, he took over Jerusalem, he ruled, and he put a statue of Zeus up in the temple and required that the Jews no longer worship their god, but Zeus. Around 167, the opposition had grown large enough and led by Judas Maccabeus, who's also known as Judas the Hammer, which I just love, finally overcame this Seleucid king and took down what was once put up by Zeus, for the statue of Zeus, and they returned to worshiping the one true God. This was an important thing. It was an important time. And when they rededicated the temple, there was a festival. It was said that the festival lasted for eight days. The rededication, or as they called it, the festival of dedication to the temple, was in the month of Chislev, which in our calendar is December. They celebrated for eight straight days. And the significance of that was that each day they needed light to continue the celebration, which then led to a continued celebration known as Hanukkah and the eight days of light. I went through a little bit of the history because I think it's important not only that we understand the part about Hanukkah, but also because Jesus was pointing to them, those that gathered around him, to remember the history. John didn't by accident put this in. He intentionally put it in because Jesus was noting the time and the place, and they were saying to him, tell us plainly, tell us plainly what you want. He had shown them, he had told them, and yet they still didn't hear. Now the importance of the history also relates because they were opposing God's will as far as Jesus was concerned, and he was making it known to them. If you looked back about 200 years ago, the same thing happened in the temple and you overthrew it. He was very clear about talking about God's will and being part of God's will because he was trying to get them to remember this co-memory or commemoration in this dedication of the temple. Now they also said, tell us plainly, because as most would point out, they were looking for a reason. Jesus never went inside, as far as John was concerned, the temple again, but it was at this point 
where he transitioned out in the porticos, out where anyone could travel, and his leadership of his flock began to form. Now, it also says, I have told you and you do not believe the works that I do, I do in my Father's name. He's trying desperately to point out to these people, the Jews that are listed, that he's doing God's will. And that if they recognize that, they would start to be able to hear. And he once again picks up an analogy that he had used just prior to this in this chapter about his sheep and how the shepherd would lay down his life for his sheep and his sheep hear him, know his voice. I will say I did a little research and there's been some current testing on sheep and it is supporting the fact that sheep do recognize faces, both human and other sheep in their flock, for up to six weeks. They also are trained by voice and by action of their shepherd. And it's very interesting, there are lots of stories that will account for sheep that get separated from their own flock, and when they're rejoined in a whole grouping of flocks, will go to the original place. There is some memory here, and it's also a recognizable being in a time when there were lots of shepherds, this is something that's well known. But once again, he said, I've told you and you don't believe because you don't have ears to hear. So when the history lesson doesn't work, he begins to talk about the hearing. He knows the history. He tries to lead them down that to his sheep. They don't hear him. And he points out that he is of at least, the very least, of one will with the Father. He's trying to serve the Father in the best way he knows how, hoping that they'll see this is the same God. But he goes further than that. He says, the Father and I are one, of one will, of one goal, and that is to bring the flock together. Now, this is a time of celebration. We're in the Easter season, and we're excited because the one thing that Jesus did as Messiah was unlike any of the others who claimed to be Messiah before, and that was he rose from the dead. He overcame death. He defeated death. And in that, all other claims were thrown aside. He's trying to point out that there is a way and a time and a place when we all come to hear the good news. We celebrate the good news in Easter. We don't talk about those who didn't hear or unable to hear, but the fact that we have heard. And as he points out in this passage, we have heard and we will be with him forever. It's not that he stopped trying, it's just that they were not ready for that kind of hearing. It led to, at the end of this chapter, their desire to stone him. He escaped again. But it's very important when we talk about this hearing that we, in this celebratory time of sharing and joy of the resurrection, it also oftentimes is a time and place when people may consider the Christian church, coming back to church, celebrating the good news. And it's an important lesson for each one of us as we welcome new people to church or we decide in our ebullience and joy to share our faith with others, that we first take a moment to hear them, to listen to them. It's often hard to use, as I joke, and I, I mean it sincerely, sometimes when you use the word evangelism, or as I shorten it by the E word, it makes people nervous because they feel that they have to fill some role or some example. The example that Jesus used was a little bit of history and a willing ear to listen to those around him and then teach them. In order to be great living examples of those sheep that have heard that will be with God forever, it's important that we take time as people have questions and listen to them. Hear where they are in their faith, their journey, their beliefs, their questions. 
And they may not hear the first time or the second time, but we have to be patient and willing to listen so that we can not only hear their story, but we can make sure that we are serving them in a way that follows God's will. Jesus is an amazing example to follow in his actions and his deeds. We have plenty of scripture to teach us ways that we can be better to one another. But hearing first is the most important part. And if we continue to listen and share, the good news itself will be lifted up. People will begin to hear or see through your own actions the good news and will want to follow, will want to be part of the flock. And all of heaven and earth will rejoice when a new Christian is added. So in this season of joy and celebration and consideration for sharing our faith, listen first. Hear God's will, share it with others, and then take time to listen. As I've seen over these past few weeks, so much can change in an instant. But it was almost 40 years before, before I heard the call that is now the rest of my life. It didn't come easy, but it came, and it came when I was ready to hear it, when I was in the right place, and I was listening to God. So if there's somebody that you know that you want to reach out to, I would encourage it at all times. And if they're not ready yet, just pause and listen more and let God's will be done. Amen.